All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to see your beautiful faces. I would like to welcome you to the San Diego College of Continuing Education third annual benefit concert. My name is Dr. Jacqueline Hester. I have the pleasure of serving as the Dean for Emeritus as well as Child Development. But before I start, I wanna thank you first to give yourselves a round of applause for being here with us today. You look so beautiful. So today, you will get a chance to what I'd like to call the Emeritus Experience, curated by our very own faculty, Professor Polena Wu. Wu. I wanna first thank our students, faculty, and staff for this and our volunteers. Without this, this would not be possible. So thank you for your hard work and dedication for putting this together. So again, give yourselves a round of applause. And also, I have the pleasure of introducing our president, President Dr. Tina King, and our acting vice president, Dr. Manu Spradley. And last but not least, we have Vice Chancellor Michelle Fishtall here with us today. And so I wanna publicly thank all of our leaders for being here, but one thing I would have to say is that thank you so much for your support. You have been Emeritus champions, what we like to say. And also thank you for answering my call. Um, when I actually call you ladies, something related to Emeritus, you never tell me no. So thank you so much again for advocating and we really appreciate you. And so please, I would like to introduce our president, Dr. Tina King. All right, good afternoon. I uh, thank you, Dean Hester, for that warm introduction. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Tina King. I proudly serve as the president at San Diego College of Continuing Education. It is an honor to be here with you at the third Emeritus Benefit Concert and to be among such talented world-class artists and humanitarians and musicians. Uh, we are also privileged to have join us from the San Diego Community College District, our Vice Chancellor of Institutional Innovation and Effectiveness, Dr. Michelle Fitchthaw. <laughs> who is also our former Vice President of Instruction. Thank you so much for being here, as well as you'll hear from both uh, her and our Interim Vice President of Instructional Services, Dr. Minu Spradley, who serves at San Diego College of Continuing Education. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to ex uh, extend an incredibly special thank you to our Emeritus Dean, Dr. Jacqueline Hester, for, oh uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes for all of her wonderful work, as well as our Emeritus Chair, Dr. Claudia torn -Salfer. And Emeritus Professor Helena and Ron Franklin. As well as the entire Emeritus Department who worked tirelessly to provide to produce this special fundraiser and to provide um, such a lovely support for today's event. Uh, thank you to Canyon Crest Academy for having us here today in this beautiful space with wonderful parking. Uh, thank you, yes. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, thank you to all of you for being here and for your generosity. Your, do your donations directly benefit the Emeritus Program and our students who have worked so hard to perform for us here today. Not only does the San Diego College of Continuing Education offer free programs, um, specifically from welding to culinary arts and free high school diploma programs, our ESL and our citizenship classes, but we are extremely honored to be the hub for free adult education across San Diego County. Through the Emeritus Program at the San Diego College of Continuing Education, 200 free courses are specifically designed for older adults to help maintain independence stay intellectually stimulated, socially engaged, and physically fit. Students can, cho can choose from healthy living, preparing for retirement, wa watercolor, uh, I'm sorry, watercolor painting, to learn how to play an instrument, as you can see here today, and you'll also have the opportunity to listen to. And so now that you've learned a little bit about San Diego College of Continuing Education, please give a round of applause for our student performers and their instructors, as well as the professional musicians in the room. They have spent hours, days, semesters, semester practicing their craft to perform today. For some students, 
they are returning to the stage, or for some, it's their very first time performing. What a treat it is to be able to hear from each, and, uh, each one of you. Thank you again for joining us this Sunday, and I'd like to also acknowledge my beautiful family is here with me today, so they're also very excited to hear. <laughs> We hope you enjoy this wonderful concert, and we look forward to seeing you on the campus this summer in the Emeritus Program. Thank you all so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michelle Fishlaw, I'm Vice Chancellor of Institutional Innovation and Effectiveness, and as we heard from Dr. King, I'm the former Vice President of Instruction here at the College of Continuing Education. And I have some personal experience with this concert. I too am a musician. I used to be a classical clarinetist. So last year, I participated in our benefit concert, which was a little bit different than this year. I am so happy to see all of you here because this is the first time we're in person after four or five years? 2020 was the last time we were all here together in person. So it's wonderful to see the musicians on stage. Last year, we did a video uh, a video benefit concert that was lovely as well, and I got to play for the first time in San Diego, a performance with our wonderful Helena, and I look forward to doing it again in the future, but most importantly is that we're all here together. And what I want you to know is that these folks on stage, in the audience, behind the stage, coming out, clearing the stage, so much effort went into this performance in this production. And I want to personally give another round of applause to everyone who worked so diligently to give to all of you this special performance today. You're going to see an enormous amount of diversity of music, and um, please enjoy, and I also have the opportunity to introduce our Interim Vice President of Instruction, Manu Spradley. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm the last person between you and the wonderful music, so I'm uh, not going to be uh, too uh, expansive here. Uh, it is uh, amazing to be here in person, to hear music in person, and uh, to have all of you here on stage. Thank you to all of our faculty, our amazing Dean, Jackie Hester, and everyone who has put this uh, together. Please enjoy this in-person concert.
Thank you. We are the San Diego Mandolin Orchestra that meets every Wednesday night from 6 until 8 o'clock over at Mesa College. The first song you heard this afternoon from us is called Art of the Rag, written by a modern day mandolin orchestra composer by the name of Neil Glad, who lives in Washington, D.C., and has written history books on mandolin as well as compositions for the orchestra, solos, ensembles, you name it, Neil has done it, written in 1980. Mandolin was written for by some of the greats throughout history, including Antonio Vivaldi, which we're not doing tonight. <laughs> but way back in 1725, the mandolin, as you see over here, was written for. Our orchestra is set up like a string orchestra, where I've got uh, first mandolins over here on my right, if you could hold those up, please, first mandolins. <laughs> That's our first mandolin section, the complement of the first violin section of the symphony orchestra. Second mandolins are over here on my left. Then we have mandolas uh, right behind me, take the place of the violas of the orchestra. We have a cello section, mando cello section. And we also have a guitar section in the back that takes the place for the percussion instruments. And over here we have a string bass, our bass mandolin player. Yes, there is actually a bass mandolin. He couldn't make it today because he's out of town. We have an instrument, however, that the string orchestra does not have. That is the octave mandolins, right over there. We're going to close our part of the program this afternoon with, of all things, we are in beach communities close here. We're going to do a Beach Boy medley to include I Get Around in My Room, Good vibrations and ending with Barbara Ann.
afternoon. My name is Marketa Hanchova, and I am one of the two guides through this afternoon. And I just heard I have an accent. It was a news for me, so I hope that you will all understand me. So uh, we just heard a wonderful mandolin orchestra, so I would like to tell you a little bit about it. You uh, heard and you saw uh, Jim Prepasso, the conductor, and I would like to tell you that he is a... You can stay right there because I'll speak about you a little bit. Uh, Jim is true gem for San Diego where he is ceaselessly and selflessly sharing his diligence and talent and incredible expertise and passion for music. He got his master degree in music from Michigan University in 1968 and from that time he was teaching at high school and while he was teaching in uh, high school you can see him play trumpet, play horn, play euphonium, play any of the mandolins you can see. If you need your instrument to repair, you call Jim. If you forgot when Vivaldi died, you call Jim. If you need the arrangement of music, you call Jim. So we were so happy when in 2009, upon his retirement, he decided that he wants to join Emeritus program. And he did, and he had uh, some wonderful awards with him. He was teacher of the year, and I read that he is also the um, retiree of the year. I don't know how that happened, but I will have to, when my time comes in 30 years, I have to let him know and ask what to do to be a retiree of the year. But I just wanted to say that he was conductor of this fabulous mandolin orchestra, and he decided in 2009 it would be fabulous if they can be part of Emeritus program. And he managed to do that, and we are so happy that they are part of our program. The orchestra itself was established in 1968 in San Diego by two visionary men, Victor de uh, Guide and uh, Eugene Wacker. And Jim was one of the, uh, is the very last uh, conductor. And the mandolin orchestras are very rare, so we are so lucky to have such a fabulous one in San Diego. The mandolins you've seen, they came about in mid-1800s, and the orchestras were created right there, and they started touring Europe, and everybody was so enchanted. And in 1899, finally, the first festival of mandolin orchestras came to Philadelphia, and all the Americans were at awe, and the mandolin orchestra started growing. The mandolin itself, even though it came about the way how you saw it in 1850, it has much longer history. It came from an instrument, many of you heard about, the lute. And the very first lute was built in Persia, today's Iran, in second century uh, BC, and it was called Barbat, so we have a long history. And as you could hear, the uh, mandolin orchestra is so versatile. They can play Vivaldi, they can play Beatles, they can play anything. And I can see that many of you now are urging and yearning to learn mandolin. So you can do it, because we have open enrollment and you can join and maybe next year I am standing here and I am introducing you as the soloist. So thank you so much. Uh, it was absolutely fabulous opening of our afternoon music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will call my beautiful colleague, Claudia, who will introduce the next piece and before I will leave, her alone here. <laughs> I wanted to uh, tell you a secret. Everybody knows what MC is, no? MC came from Europe and people did not know what the etymology is. And they were thinking, my God, we have to come with something so we don't look like we don't know what's going on. So somebody said, what about uh, master of ceremony? Well, that would work. Little they know that MC stands for Marketa and Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marketa. And as you just heard, um, Marketa and I teach music appreciation class, and we love to share uh, our love and passion for music. So there's a different way to enjoy music in the Emeritus program. So you can become virtuos mandolin and guitar players, or ukulele, or piano players. 
uh, or skillful singers, but you also can become what I think is called virtuous listeners. And that's always very special to learn more and appreciate uh, music from around the world. And it's in general fun to learn. We in the Emeritus program, we do believe that life adventure is all about ongoing learning, the love for learning, and never to stop learning. And so we are in the business of enjoying uh, to present many different uh, classes in art, in health, in music, and general interest. And many of you, I bet, are taking one or two classes. Maybe you're enrolled for another third class <laughs> soon. But um, we have a passion in San Diego continuing education for on, um, ongoing learning, lifelong learning. We also want to thank very quick our administrators. We see our, you, our students, see our teachers. Um, but many, many things are done behind the scenes. It truly takes a village. So uh, Dr. King, Dr. Fishtal, Dr. Hester, Dr. Spratley, those are um, very important people who make these programs uh, possible to advocate across the district, across the state, so that we can offer these free classes to you. Uh, our next number will be, you already see our next performing group, the Serotones. The Serotones have been in existence since 2014. Um, they uh, love to present music from truly uh, different cultures, different continents, in different languages. This time they will present music from Spain, Finland, and Armenia. So not only they have to become great singers in different rhythms and styles, but they also have to learn the different languages and the proper pronunciation. You also see, I want to welcome my colleague, uh, my dear colleague, Dr. Momilani Ramstrom, who has been 18 years uh, teaching at Mesa College. And um, we are so grateful that when she decided to retire, she said, ah, music, you never retire from music. Actually, you never stop learning. You always stay curious. And Momilani joined the Emeritus program and is conducting this fabulous concert and group, uh, the Serotones. So enjoy their performance, and I see you soon. <laughs> Welcome everyone. It's so wonderful to be here with this group. This group has worked very hard to master these languages. The first song we're gonna sing is De los Cuatro Mulero, and it's from Andalusia, Spain. And it was collected by Lorca in 1931. So it was an old mountain song about mule tears and a woman who is in love and finally marries her favorite mule tear from the mountains of Andalusia.
This next song journeys to the north of Europe, to Finland. This song is called Jevan Polka, and it's in Finnish, which is a very fun language to sing. And it was originally recorded, it's an old uh, Finnish folk song, though the lyrics are not uh, traditional. But it's a song about a, a man who has a woman he loves and he takes her out dancing all night long, trying to escape the mother who's chasing after her. <laughs> and this song, there's parts of it. There's uh, improvisational parts, so it's not all Finnish language. And this song became so popular in about 2006 that it became a worldwide phenomenon. And it was featured in a Japanese anime. And then I found it last, a couple years ago, a blind Turkish percussionist was singing just this one part. It starts with Ritzdatsa. So you're gonna hear this, and it's an improvisational part. Anyway, it's very fun to sing, Yevan Polka. Song, we're going to journey to Armenia. This is a very popular song, another traditional song, and it's in Armenian, and it's about spring and love and wondering whether the person you love actually loves you too. And about three weeks ago, I was in LA, and I went to an Armenian market, and I was curious, so I was talking to a woman in the produce section, and I said, do you know the song? 
And I started singing it. Not only did she know it, but everybody started singing it along <laughs> with me. So it's a very popular song if you happen to be Armenian. Garun, Garun, which means spring, spring. Women always have to help men and how it works. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, always. I am going to sing for you two Moravian songs. Uh, I come from Moravia, which sits on the border with Austria, Slovakia, and Hungary. So our folk heritage is very rich of all of these influences. The first song is about how she deceived him. Či že jste husličky, či je, kdo vás tu zanechal? Či že jste husličky, či je, kdo vás tu zanechal? Na trávě poválané, na trávě poválané, upaty o řeka. Kdo že tu trávu tak zválal, aj modré fialí. A kdo že tu trávu tak zválal, aj modré fialí. Že jste tu husličky samé, že jste tu husličky samé, na světě zůstali. Který tu muzika 
second song is also about she deceiving him, except he loves her so much that he says, whatever you do, just don't leave me. You can even sell the last cow we have. You can go to the city and spend our last money. You can even beat me. <laughs> I know. Czech women, what do you want? <clears throat> Nič, že je nič, čorta nič. Včera som měl prajarečku, dneska nič. A nič, že je nič, čorta nič. Včera som měl prajarečku, dneska
it was Helena, Liliana, and Yevan. I hope you enjoy the piano. And now we go again to vocal music. And you know, vocal music, with all respect to all the other art categories, is very special because you don't need anything else but your anatomy and a little bit of courage and maybe some kind and patient audience. Since the dawn of civilization, we were using song to put our children to sleep and celebrating with song all the milestone in our life. So we will have a notable, another vocal group uh, that is in Emeritus program for the last 15 years. And they are concentrating on popular music, musicals and Americana. And uh, they are going to be conducted by our new addition to our ranks, uh, Ashlyn Brown, who is the perfect for the job because she has master degree from Nazarene University in conducting instrumental and choral music. She's also an uh, accomplished flautist. She also uh, plays piano. And uh, she was so happy to take over this wonderful, wonderful um, choir. Okay. Well, they told me not to talk too much, and now there is nothing to do. So it's hard to assess. <laughs> so looks like they are coming, and here is Notable and Ashlyn Brown. a calm surrender to the rush of day when the heat of a rolling wind can be turned away an enchanted woman and it sings me through it's enough when it's restless for you just to be with you
There's a time for everyone If they only learn That the twisting kaleidoscope Moves us all in turn There's a rhyme and reason To the wild outdoors When the heart of this star-crossed voyager Leaves his mind with yours And can you feel the love tonight? It is where we are It is where we are It's love with this wide-eyed wonder
and gentlemen, welcome to the second half on our exciting program. I would like to introduce you Ukulele and Guitar Orchestra, and I want to ask you, anybody knows uh, where Ukulele comes from? Hawaii, with all respect to you, you will all earn F, because the story goes that in 1879, three cabinet makers came from beautiful part of Europe, from the Madeira Islands and the Azores. Their name was Santos Nunes and Diaz, and they came in pursuit of beautiful women and riches, and they brought with them Bruguinha, an instrument, which is actually ukulele. And the Hawaiian were so astonished, except they said, Bruguinha, that's strange name. Let's call it you, you, ukulele. So that's how ukulele came uh, to Hawaii and how it came to America. In 1915, San Francisco held a world exposition, Panama International, and Hawaii had a small pavilion. And from morning to evening, they played ukulele. And Americans were absolutely enchanted by this beautiful instrument. And you will have the chance to hear it and if you are burning to learn it, you know what to do. You can join our wonderful group, which is around only about one and a half or two years, under the baton of Ron Franklin. Ron Franklin is an accomplished musician. He's a composer, he's a guitar performer. He actually holds a degree from Balvin Wallace Conservatory and a master degree in guitar performance from Texas State. And uh, he is not only composer, guitar player, and conductor, but he's very accomplished video producer and it earned him Emmy Award in 2013. And so he will be, yes. We choose only the best for our program, as you noticed. And so you will hear uh, two songs, uh, one from Forrest Gump and one written in 1700s by blind Irish uh, composer. And Ran will also embellish our evening with his own composition. Ladies and gentlemen, Ran Franklin and ukulele and guitar orchestra. Thank you so much, Marquita. So this is a piece that I wrote uh, a number of years ago um, for use on a, uh, a DVD that was all about doing yoga for kids. And uh, this ended up being the piece that they do their little meditation to. Uh, it's called Mysterious Deep. And then last year, I actually put out an album of all original guitar music. And this is the title song from that album called Mysterious Deep. You can find it on my website, ronfranklinmusic.com. All right, guys, here's my piece. And then we're going to play some pieces for you as a group.
going to play the theme from the film Forrest Gump by Alvin Silvestri, Alan Silvestri, one of the uh, great all-time film composers. And then after that, we will do the piece by uh, the Irish composer Turtle Caroline called She Beg and She Won't.
Bravo to the Guitar and Ukulele Ensemble. And I am a guitarist, and I can tell you the guitar is a tricky instrument. It has six strings, and um, everything can squeak and make funny noises. It's not an easy instrument. Uh, so kudos to Ron and his students for this fabulous performance. Well, in our next uh, program, piece on our program, we will travel one more time back to Spain. The composer Isaac Albenes was kind of an adventurer. He was um, like Hemingway. He loved to travel a lot. And uh, they say that at 12 years old, he actually was a stowaway on a ship. And he traveled to South America, to um, North America, England, and Cuba, etc. Um, that's kind of partially true, sounds like a wonderful story that we have a composer that was a stowaway as a 12 year old. Um, it's partially true, he traveled, did travel around the world, but it happened that his father accompanied him. <laughs> so we have the ship tickets for him to travel. But the wonderful thing is traveling around the world, it gave him these impressions of music around the world. He ended up uh, by age 15 to be a concert veteran on the piano. And particularly during his tours through England, he actually started enjoying um, showing music from his home country. Um, so in the 1880s, 1890s, um, he gave this flair on his concert tours of Spain to his audiences in England. And so you will hear this very special little tango by Isaac Albenes. It's quite a famous little tango in D major. Um, you will uh, see that in this uh, rhythm, it sounds like a tango, but Tango is not really a tango. There's the Argentinian tango, there's the Spanish tango, and then there's a the Cuban-influenced tango, and that's what you hear. So you can firsthand listen to the many musical influences that happened on Isaac Albenes as a young person. So here, enjoy our fantastic Helena Way. Well, we didn't have time to do it tonight.
I tried to come in in tango steps or habanera steps, but I didn't succeed. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. And we have another beautiful number uh, that will be a vocal number. But before they will come in, because it will take a little time, I just wanted to thank you that you um, took the time and came out. Because it's so very important that we have audience. It would be awfully lonely if you did not come. And as you know, there is not a song or piece of music that would be completed until it reaches you, the audience. Because each of you give each piece uh, its own life and its own beauty. And everything that is in the air, and we call it the beautiful vibes. And uh, it's so beautiful to have the collective joy of listening to, together to the music. So you will be hearing another wonderful choir that is under the auspices of Emeritus Program, Pacific Air, which is around from the 70s, but under the, um, uh, in the Emeritus Program is about 15 years. And uh, they have very, very diverse repertoire. And they have a new conductor, Dr. Lee, who is quite accomplished. Uh, she hails from uh, South Korea, where she got the first education. And then uh, she studied in Manhattan School of Music. She has artistic diploma from Juilliard. And she has a um, doctorate from University of Southern California, Thornton School of Music. She was very much involved in opera, helping in opera in Aspen in, uh, in uh, Baldwin Wallace University, and we are so very happy that she is conducting our wonderful, wonderful choir. So ladies and gentlemen, let's joyfully invite in Dr. Lee and Pacific Air.
what a fantastic performance. We enjoyed uh, this so much. Thank you. <laughs> Let me tell you about our next two performers. Um, Neil Kovrick is uh, known to all of us in the San Diego College of Continuing Education because Neil literally is everywhere. He knows everyone. And if I need, as a department chair, help, I always go, Neil, where do I go? And Neil for sure has an answer. <laughs> so Neil is um, actually the president of our classified senate. He's also the president of directors of our San Diego College of Continuing Education Foundation. And um, he is um, student services. He leads many efforts across um, our institution. Uh, but he's also a fantastic singer. So today we see uh, the many hats he see, uh, wears, but we are going to see his hat as a singer. And you will be impressed. Um, he's accompanied by our faculty member, Loria Herald, who is a co-repetitor. Now, that's homework for you to look up what's a co-repetitor. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But she is a fantastic voice coach, and she uh, teaches a voice and singing class for our emeritus program for many years. Uh, she also coaches many of the young performers at the JCC, the J Com some of you might be familiar with. And um, so both of them are going to perform a wonderful uh, song by Fred Astaire from a musical, a comical musical, uh, called The Royal Wedding. Please welcome Loria and Neil. One more chance. Do you love me? No. No? Stop stalling. I want a direct answer. Do you love me? <laughs> you know, you know what, kitten? There's there's one thing about you I just can't understand. What's that, Einstein? How could you believe me when I Trust alone and low to time of like me. That's the way you want 
sometime, yeah? Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, our beautiful uh, musical musing afternoon is drawing to the end. I am going to uh, announce the very last number, but be before I do, I just wanted to let you know that on behalf of everyone you see on the stage and behind the scenes, that we are so genuinely happy and appreciative that we can serve the Emeritus program. And I'll tell you why. I know you don't expect me to say we don't enjoy it, but I hope you know I am genuine. Because we do so much for children in our life, and we do so much for young people, and we do so much for youth who is on the cusp of their new career and new life, and we do in comparison so little for people who already pay the dues and who have great accomplishment in life and who actually prepared for us a better life. So I am so honored along with my colleagues to be a teacher of the Emeritus program and I spent my whole life in the classroom and I have to tell you the inspiration and gratitude and uh, the um, appreciation that I feel every day is just amazing. So I would like to thank all of you, all of our students and everyone again who came today and now, ladies and gentlemen, we are for real Americana. All that jazz will end our evening. And uh, as you know, it's, uh, as I mentioned, Americana. And I can tell you a little story of my compatriots that you will know, Antonin Dvořák, who came to America in 1892. And he said that the future of American music lies in the heritage of the beauty of the black spirituals and uh, everybody ridiculed him and he was so right because so many genres come from the beauty of the heritage uh, of the black people as uh, Dvořák said that their soul and their music has every show shade of everything what is in our life from deep sorrow to the greatest joy okay so looks like everybody is almost on the stage and uh, I will invite in Richard Almanza, our conductor, who actually brought the jazz band to Emeritus program about six years ago. He is very accomplished. He was in the classroom over 40 years. For the last 25 years, he is um, involved in the jazz bands around San Diego. He's conducting Kearney Concert Band, which is the oldest operating concert band in the county. So I hope you will enjoy the jazz pieces by the Emeritus Jazz Ensemble.
Thank you. That, I don't know, is this mic on? Can you hear me? You hear me, yes? No? Okay, good. <laughs> that was a switch in time. That's a Sammy Nestico piece. Sammy Nestico is actually a composer, arranger who lived just up the road here in Carlsbad. He only passed away about three years ago. Prolific writer for jazz, wrote for two military bands. We're going to uh, complete the next one. Is another Sammy Nestico tune. He wrote uh, this as a sequel to the first piece, which was called You Gotta Try. And then the sequel's name was You Gotta Try Harder.
Wow. Can everyone just pause for one second? Can we give all of our performers a big round of applause for today's event? We want to thank everyone for your generosity for giving today. Again, thank you for our third annual Marriage's Benefit concert. For those of you who have helped, we'd like for you to come to the front of the stage. And while we're transitioning, can I have all of our Marriage's faculty stand up for one moment so we can acknowledge you and come forward, all of the faculty, Marriage's faculty.